I've done my best. I cover the people, play things that mean the most to us in our daily lives. And the story I'm going to report to you right now touches influence on our lives as any event taking place in the world today. This is an important story, as important as life itself. It's needed telling for a long time. <laughs> essential to life is a golden thread of truth running through the entire stream of civilization. Indeed, the story of cattle and of milk is an integral part of the story of man. Matter of fact, in the very first chapter of the Bible, in, in Genesis, I quote, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw it was good. American pioneers who opened the West felt that it was good also. Sort of walking chuck wagons carrying nutrition for a growing nation. Today we find ever increasing evidence of the indispensability of dairy products throughout the world. How the American dairy industry has geared itself to meet the urgent demands of 20th century type of living is the new story of milk. Not long ago, well, when I was a kid, the story of milk wasn't a very new story. The farm boy's day began before sunup. <laughs> the day had already gotten a good start. Those country-style pancakes haven't changed. Neither has a young boy's appetite. The boy's father out in the barnyard getting ready for the morning milking. Actually getting the milk was only a first step. There were still a few things to be done before it could be sold. For one thing, the milk was strained. For another, it was cooled. muscle power. The days were long on yesterday's farm, but there were compensations. The race to be first at the old swimming hole. Or just sitting in the sun, contemplating the wonder of it all. But back to my story. The milk is well cooled by now, and it's time to load up and head for town.
it took a while to get there, but nobody really minded then. And that's how it was on the dairy farm years ago. I don't have to tell you folks that conditions on the farm certainly have changed through the years. Country-style pancakes and appetites may be the same, but the stove is new. We have gas and electricity now, and we have diesel power and a lot of other new things. But what about the milk industry? What's happened here? After all, a cow is a cow and always has been. This is a cow of today. But this is a replica of a picture drawn of a cow in the year 1000 BC. To most of us, things are basically the same, same confirmation more or less, the cow of today and the cow of then. But to the knowing eye, there's a marked improvement in the dairy cow of today. This copy of a picture drawn some 3,000 years ago tells us something else. It proves conclusively that man and his herd have been closely associated almost since the dawn of history, with the cow serving as a beast of burden and as a good provider of food and clothing. Here's an example of an early form of Egyptian writing, a sort of picture magazine of that day. On it are two pictographs paying tribute to the dairy cow as the foster mother of the human race, supplier of beef, source of butter, the original cause of cheese. All of which goes to prove that milk, nature's most nearly perfect food, has been with us for a very long time. What then is the new story of milk? Well, for one thing, modern dairying has become perhaps the greatest single industry in the world today. In the United States alone, enough milk is produced to form a river every year, 3,000 miles long, 40 feet wide, 3 feet deep. A far cry from the wagon loads the dairy farmer used to drive to market every morning. But you know, volume alone isn't all that's new in the story of milk. This is a modern dairy farm. Yet, in many ways, it looks a lot like its older cousin, the dreamy, slow-moving, hand-operated farm of yesteryear. Now, as then, there are the picturesque fields, the green pastures, the clear ponds and the gentle brooks, the comfortable barn, the familiar silo, the farmhouse. And, of course, old Bossy herself, still chewing contentedly on her cud. But here the comparison with the past ends. For your dairy has kept pace with the times and mechanized almost all of its operations. Not so many years ago, farming was considered merely a skill. Today, it's a complicated, highly specialized science. to improve his soil and his crops, to provide his herd with newer and better meat. In order to draw from his land the richest, most nutritious crop, he utilizes all the knowledge of modern chemistry. Replenishing and reconditioning the soil according to the latest, most scientific methods. For the modern farmer has learned that the quality and amount of food received will have a marked effect on the health of the cow and the quality of the milk she gives. Modern research has also taught him that the animal's surroundings and general state of well-being play an important part in the production of high-quality milk. So today he houses and cares for his animals in the most efficient and scientifically designed buildings. Roomy, well-lighted, often mechanically ventilated to ensure fresh air, and from one end to the other meticulously clean. A 
far cry from the dark, cramped quarters which house the dairy herd of a bygone farm. The cow's dinner, too, bears little resemblance to the old days. Now the herd's diet is carefully and scientifically balanced to include every essential food element necessary for the high production of quality-rich milk. Now a modern farmer keeps an accurate record of each feeding, along with the animal's current milk production. Later, he correlates and studies this information to determine the best possible combination of feeds for each individual animal. Cows are still milked twice each day, morning and evening, but that's about all that's left over from the old way. An expert milker quickly washes and disinfects the udder. suction cups and the completely automatic milking machine. Untouched, the milk flows along a network of spotless piping to modern refrigerated storage tanks. Another 20th century concept is the modern scientific milking pump. Again, rigid hygienic conditions as the milk flows to the receptacle which accurately records the animal's individual production. Then the milk is sent to the pipeline. In the ultra-modern version of the old milk house, the fresh warm milk is automatically strained and immediately cooled to the proper temperature while awaiting transportation to the city processing plant or country receiving station. Well, that's part one of the new story of milk. Quite a change from the way it used to be done down on the farm, isn't it? Part two of this remarkable story concerns the finely tuned intricately timed processing and distribution system which moves nature's most nearly perfect product from the farm to you. That story begins right where we left off, at the refrigerated holding tank in the milk house. For at the beginning of each day, the race is on to bring fresh milk to you in the shortest possible time. Today, the refrigerated holding tanks are quickly emptied by pumping the milk through sterilized plastic-lined hoses into huge insulated tank trucks for bulk delivery. Then the vital cargo is on its way to the heart of your community. To arrive at your modern processing and packaging plant virtually as fresh and wholesome as the moment it was taken from the obliging cow. Following each day's processing, pipes, valves, and fittings in the plant which have come in contact with the flow of milk are removed, thoroughly cleaned and sterilized. Much of the equipment is cleaned right in place by pumping a hot solution through the pipes. The results, sparklingly clean, thoroughly sterilized equipment. Another vital paragraph in the new story of milk. And still the parade of progress continues, this time under the watchful eyes of the inspector of weights and measures and your local health officer. Their job is to check on quality and quantity. They do this by inspecting every step of the dairy operation. Here is double protection for your benefit all along the line from processing to packaging. But before the newly arrived shipment is accepted for processing, test samples are taken from the tank truck directly to the plant laboratory. Here they are given a variety of checks and tests to assure top quality. Only after the laboratory says OK is the raw, fresh milk brought into the plant, ready for the trip to the highly specialized and complicated processing equipment. After entering the plant, the white liquid travels through the pipes to the first stage of processing, the centrifugal clarifier. The clarifier is the modern scientific equivalent of the simple old-fashioned straining process of grandfather's day. The trip along the pipeline continues to the pasteurization process, 
in which the milk is passed in a continuous flow through a series of stainless steel plates heated to 161 degrees for a total of only 15 seconds. This rapid heating assures absolute purity without changing or affecting the flavor of the milk. The milk moves on to the next processing operation, homogenization with pressures up to 3,000 pounds. Next, the milk is forced out at high velocity through a nozzle-like opening. The fat globules are broken up and distributed evenly throughout the liquid. After homogenization, the milk is rapidly cooled to its best storage temperature and temporarily held in large tanks, ready to be packaged and distributed to you. Unlike the cow, what you put the milk into is kept right on changing with the times. And one of the single most important developments in the new story of milk is the package itself. Let me show you what I mean. Believe it or not, this actually was a milk bottle. Not very handy for home delivery, but a bottle nevertheless. And when this football type of container went out of style, it was replaced with this handy little item, the open air bucket. Smile all you like, but remember, it was the best they could think of in those days. Now, of course, everybody knows that milk is too precious to carry around in an open bucket like this. And way back then, they knew it also. So they decided to put a lid on it. That's how progress works. But even a lid couldn't make this bucket a good container for milk. And after a while, they had to invent something else. And this was it. How do you get milk out of it? Why, it's easy. The old dipper system. Dip around in here a while. Sooner or later, you might come up with something. And even pour it correctly. It was very easy to put back in, actually. Very seldom lost the dipper. Very seldom. But that, too, left something to be desired. And what was needed was an honest-to-goodness, convenient take-home package. Being a nation of tinkerers, we soon came up with the answer. The Lester jar. Except for the fact that it weighed four times as much as the milk, took about two minutes to open, spilled most of the contents before you got it open, and actually cost much more, twice more, than the milk itself. It was the perfect container. And so progress had to keep on progressing. The covered glass bottle came into our lives for about 1890. And in one form or another, it's been with us ever since. But the modern dairy industry, in its never-ending search for the perfect container, knew there were still improvements to be made. A package was needed that could really live up to the newness of the dairy farm and the processing plant. Something that would protect all the careful and scientific handling which the milk undergoes today. A container that would be light, safe, strong, and convenient for everyone. Convenient, sanitary, safe. Easy as a pitcher to use. And to top all these advantages, the disposable milk carton is the most sanitary milk container ever invented, and only by you. The paper itself from which the cartons are made has a long history of purity. In one sense, the paper carton isn't made at all. It's grown. That's right, grown. Vast forest reserves are cultivated exclusively for the making of paper for food containers. These forests are given special attention and extraordinary care to ensure a never-ending supply that is pure and will meet the exacting requirements of a sanitary food container. From the very beginning, the manufacturing of paper is kept under strict sanitary control. The logs are debarked and washed in pure, filtered water before being cut up, ground, and cooked under laboratory control into pulp from which the milk container board is manufactured. The pure fiber board made from virgin timber is then converted to the intricately shaped blanks from which the milk carton is formed right in the milk processing plant just seconds before being filled with your milk. After these paper blanks are loaded into the completely automatic forming and filling machine, they are not touched until they emerge filled, sealed, and ready for delivery to you. A prime example of one of the many ways in which the dairy industry of today has completely modernized its operation. Well, this ingenious machine not only forms the containers, sterilizes them, and moves 
them along to be filled with milk, sealed, stapled, and coated. But it does all this without once allowing the containers to be touched by human hands. From the standpoint of the added convenience to dairymen, grocers, and consumers, from the standpoint of health alone, the disposable paper container has no equal. So you see, part of the new story of milk is the story of a new partnership. And in this ingenious machine, the partnership becomes one. For at the moment, the pure paper blanks become cartons ready for food. And at the exact moment, the milk is just right for packaging. They merge within this machine into a single unit, food and package, ready immediately to be distributed to you. Quite a difference from the old time method, isn't it? But now the new story of milk gets even bigger. Leaving the dairy, the milk is dispatched without delay to a tremendous network of outlets. For the prompt, efficient delivery of fresh, wholesome milk to you is the daily accomplishment of your modern dairy. To modern food stores where the milk is displayed in attractive, easy to get out refrigerators. To restaurants, large and small, where milk is being served more and more as the perfect mealtime beverage. To schools which provide that noontime energy for our growing youngsters. To factories and office buildings, at work or at play, delicious energy providing milk is being made available everywhere. Even at night, long after most stores are closed, convenient outdoor milk vending machines stand ready to serve. For today, science, skill and know-how of the modern dairy farmer, plus the latest machines and the newest methods of dairy processing plants, all combined to bring you the freshest, most nutritious milk possible. Milk which only a few hours ago was freshly produced on the farm. Fresh, wholesome, good tasting milk. The best to be had anywhere in the world today. Thanks to today's scientific production and modern packaging. Yesterday it was hand milking in a dingy barn. Through progress, it's done today automatically with efficient sanitary milking machines. Once the milk was crudely handled and primitively cooled, now all processing is automatic and correct temperatures are maintained by the most modern refrigeration equipment. Yesterday's old-fashioned muscle power has been replaced by almost complete mechanization from farm to delivery. The day of the horse-drawn cart with its leisurely pace has disappeared to be replaced by the most modern bulk pickup and home delivery trucks, bringing the freshest possible milk to you in a matter of hours in a convenient, easy to pour container. Modern dairy methods and techniques are bringing fresh milk in these cartons to populated areas throughout the entire world. For the new story of milk is actually a world where improvements are shared in ideas of pasteurization and homogenization. The milk carton has made a lasting contribution to the new story of milk, something a milkman can be really proud of, something the world waited for for a long time. You know, as a reporter, I've seen the hunger and malnutrition in the world's underdeveloped countries, and I've noticed that where milk is plentiful, people seem stronger and healthier. And I've come to it. It's awfully dairy industry is directing all its efforts toward keeping the milk ever new.